Hi everyone, you're watching The Art of Save Scumming. Thank you all for watching. I had a mind to do an early campaign guide for Boris Ursus because a few of you have asked me to do that. You're having some problems with the early campaign and that was a little bit puzzling to me because I always thought that Boris's campaign was a lot easier than Katarin's campaign. But I was like, you know what? It's been a minute since I've played Boris. I'll go back and look at it and see what's going on. Well, I got in there to do that and somehow my Boris was gone. I don't know how this happened, one of the first campaigns that I played in Immortal Empires was Boris. So somehow, some way, just he just disappeared. So I had to go back into the Realms of Chaos and unlock Boris, unfortunately. <laughs> and I actually was having a good time in the Realms of Chaos, uh, unlocking the character, but I had a, uh, a game ending glitch. I accomplished my goal. I was gonna play that campaign to completion, but I got my Boris back so I can do that campaign guide. But while I was in that campaign, I was doing some rift surfing. If you guys haven't done rift oh, surfing wait, wait, in the Realms of Chaos, then you can earn a lot of money doing that. And I thought it was a unique opportunity to discuss different ways to fight different demon armies with a basic army from Kislev. All right, folks, we're going to be starting off with Nurgle. And this is going to be the easiest, so that's why we're going to start with it. Nurgle's slow, but they have really high health pools. They also got a lot of demonic units, so they're pretty... Uh, in, I don't want to say impervious, they're pretty resistant to missile fire. Most of our army, and we're going to be using the same army for all of these tests, most of our army is going to be physical attacks. It's not going to be magic missiles. We do have some magic missiles, and basically in each of these situations, we're going to be flexing those magic missiles to take out key targets. In this instance, we're concerned about the rot flies, because they're going to come in, and they're going to be monstrous flying units that have the ability to do some decent damage to our Kossars. And if we take those Ice Guard that we have, you can see we have two Ice Guard, we're going to use them at the rear to saturate the flanks with magic missiles. So those rot flies are going to come in, try to flank us, and we're just going to shoot them down rather quickly. And that's going to leave the rest of the army to basically get chewed up by our physical attacks. And because they are slow, they're pretty easy to target with magic. So you're going to see that as this battle progresses, we're not really going to uh, sit and wait. We're going to send our casters forward to do some damage before they get there because, again, Nurgle has such high health pool that uh, we want to soften them up before they get to our lines because our front lines in this instance are composed of armored Kossars. And while they do pretty good armored piercing damage, particularly in the early game, when you're up against the demonic units, sometimes, particularly when we're talking about Nurgle, it can be a little bit frustrating just shooting them to pieces and not really going anywhere. So we're going to, again, soften them up with some magic here between our uh, Frost Maiden of Tempest and our uh, Katarin, obviously, who is an Ice Witch. When I'm using Katarin, I'm almost always talking about using the slow spell for the purposes of either keeping the vanguard from getting swallowed up by things like these rot flies, for instance, or to slow the lines before they make contact after they're in range of my front line. So it really depends on which composition we're talking about. In this instance, we're using the slow down uh, ice sheet spell for the purpose of uh, keeping my uh, my frost maiden from getting bogged down so she can continue to roll around and cast whatever it is she wants you can see we've now made contact with the lines and those rot flies are getting chewed up again you can see that it, those those physical attacks only are really not doing a whole lot to those rot flies but once they fly into those magic missiles of the ice guard it's basically game over again one way to get around this is to use the imbuement uh, of magic spells that allow uh, for magical attacks to be enabled, but those are temporary buffs, and again, it's a little bit heavy on the micromanage for uh, my taste when it comes to missile-based armies, especially because you can get a lot of value, particularly against Nurgle, when you're talking about offensive magic spells like the uh, the, the wind spell, the uh, the bombardment spells that that they have access to at the the Hawks of Mishka, I mean, that thing's pretty cool because you can cast it on things that are really right up in your grill and you don't have to worry about damaging your, your own units. And, and really what it comes down to when you're fighting Nurgle as Kislev 
particularly if you are outnumbered, which we're not in this instance, what it really comes down to is derping their army around so they can't get their full force up on you right away. Because it's going to take them time to get there. Any portions of their army that you slow down on their way to you are going to pay dividends because that prevents your units from getting tied up. It looks to me that we've used maybe a quarter of our entire army's ammunition in this battle, and we took minimal casualties. In fact, uh, zero casualties, to be exact. Next up, we're going up against Zinch, and this is going to be a departure from our checkerboard formation. I've got us set up in a front line that is all of our armored Kossars, and then we've got our regular Kossars that can fire over the front line, and then we've got our Ice Guard. Now, the Ice Guard are going to be there for the purposes of targeting down key units that need to be destroyed quickly, and then the rest of them are just going to continue to saturate fire as the battle moves and progresses. We will be using our uh, our casters, but one of the things that the casters are going to be crucial for is to keep those shields down during the missile fire. We want to make sure that those missiles are doing damage to actual entities instead of just uh, knocking around uh, the, the shields. So we're going to do a little bit of casting here at the beginning for the purposes of, of clumping some some units up and, and doing some damage with magic, but then we're going to pull away and uh, reserve the rest of our magic for once our lines make contact so we can knock those shields out. And then once those shields are out, any casts that we do are free and clear and they'll be doing actual damage. So now we've made contact. We don't really have to worry about a physical altercation, a, a melee or anything like that. We're mostly concerned about our units getting hammered by their uh, their magic missiles. So we do have some screamers coming in on the perimeter that are not going to last very long. Uh, they're going to get uh, taken out by the ice guard, and uh, we won't have to really worry about those. I've advanced the front line up to go ahead and start really smacking down on those uh those blue and pink horrors and hopefully they'll make pretty short work of them as you can see we've now engaged uh the the third line back uh into those screamers they're not gonna be in there much longer and uh we really at this point in time are just looking for good shots with our magic and then consolidating those uh, those lines to focus fire on any targets that remain now it is somewhat likely that you're going to take some heavy damage on your single entities in this instance because not only do you have the blue fire of Zinch that's being casted by their caster, it's going to do pretty good damage on large targets. Uh, their caster also has a missile attack that they're predominantly going to target your single entities and you are using them as a vanguard so as they're tying up those missile units, they're going to be getting smacked around by other ones that are up there. The whole purpose of that is to draw the fire from your, for all intents and purposes, unshielded infantry as they get their missiles out. You can always use the Patriarchs to heal your stuff up as well. We took 17 casualties in that fight, so decent. That can be recovered easily with post-battle replenishment. Now let's take a look at Slanesh. Now Slanesh is going to be the one that is going to probably do the most damage to your army simply because they are so fast and they do a lot of damage. They are, however, a glass cannon. These battles are going to last very briefly. It's going to be exceptionally violent. It's going to be a lot of units being uh, dispositioned off the battle map in a rather quick fashion. And in this case, what we're going to try to do is use our heroes in the form of the patriarchs to keep the damage off of the infantry because Slanesh just does so much damage so quickly to blobs of infantry that they can really chew through your front line regardless of what it's made out of. Uh, your only real hope is to have a solid ice guard doom stack so you can trade pretty evenly magical attacks on them but yeah, other than that, you have to basically hope that you can saturate with them with missiles. As you can see, I'm doing massive quantities of damage to them, but it's still not fast enough to keep them from getting up on me. 
I want to use those slow spells, use that magic wherever I possibly can. Uh, we got the uh, Hawks of Mishka coming down here uh, pretty quickly to hopefully do some damage on uh, those without damaging my troops. And you can see we're getting a little bit chewed up on the, uh, the Patriarchs there. But for all intents and purposes, the battle's over at this point. We're just waiting for all the demonic units to, to go down, and we're going to route the mortal infantry. That one unit of armor, Kossars, is getting a little bit chewed up. It looks worse than it is. It looks like they've taken a lot of damage. They just haven't lost all the entities associated with that damage yet. And what we're going to do as much damage to this army, run as much of it down as we can, because when we're talking about rift surfing in this particular instance, we're trying to maximize the the post-battle options to get the most amount of money and Slanesh is one of those ones that has mortal units in their roster for these uh, these rift spawning armies and because of that we have the capacity to get better replenishment, better post-battle loot. Yeah, so we took 19 casualties in that which was more than we took in the previous ones obviously. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be but they still did a fair amount of damage. And then last up, corn. And corn is going to be interesting because they're going to be high damage dealing on their infantry, but they're relatively slow. They're not the slowest, but compared to Slanesh, uh, the corn should be a relative walk in the park. We really need to watch out for any demonic, heavily armored uh, outriders that, that could hit us in the flanks. And then we also want to make sure that we are keeping that front line that they're sending against us, which is going to be mostly blood letters, which are going to be demonic infantry. We want to make sure that we're doing maximum damage to them, and then we'll worry about the chaos warriors and stuff like that after we make contact. We'll do some flanking if we have to, but we want to make sure that we do as much damage to the demonic stuff as possible, and to do that, we're going to go ahead and send our casters out in front like we have in the past to try to get the most out of our magic pool. And to do that, to start off with, we're just gonna slow everything down, hopefully mix them up a little bit, try to get them in a clump, and then drop some spells on top of them. Most of the time when we're talking about the blood letters, the best way to defeat those is going to rapidly do damage to them. But when it comes to their approach, if we can soften them up a little bit before they get there, then they're more likely to start crumbling once they start getting excessive missile fire. So if they go in a little bit damaged before they start receiving the missile fire, then they're more likely to just start crumbling after they get hit with a couple volleys in quick succession. The other thing that we really got to worry about is the lords for corn, particularly the, um, what are they, the, the heralds of corn. They can do amazing one-on-one -on -one duelist damage so you want to try to keep them away from your lords and heroes because you can look away like i have here i've left katarin unattended and she's getting her butt kicked by this herald of corn i've now realized that she's not doing so great so i'm going to try and get her out and get her out of there get her healed up with this uh with this patriarch we're going to probably double up on the patriarch heals and the meanwhile it's just letting the missiles do the work while we heal up our single entities. We try to trade off, slow some more stuff down so we can saturate without getting a whole lot of friendly fire from our back lines. And this battle's basically over. We're waiting for that Herald to go ahead and start crumbling and then those, uh, those Chaos Warriors won't last much longer after that occurs. Again, Corn being one of the ones that does bring uh, mortal units to these rift battles so it's in your best interest to do as much damage to the escaping army as possible because they're going to be the ones they're going to be giving you your post battle options if you just let those units survive and run away the army will disappear like they only last for a single battle you never get a second battle out of them but you won't get as good post battle options from capturing captives than if you just eliminate them and there you have it we took nine casualties in that one well i hope that you guys enjoyed this video this was a fun one to make and a different look at how to fight the demons with
Kislev, the people who are holding back the Chaos Tide uh, from the Northern Wastes. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider sharing it with a friend and hitting that subscribe button. My next milestone is meeting the minimum thresholds for uh, collaboration with CA so that I can get early access to some of the things that uh, are coming down the pipe so that I can spend some time in the background dissecting them before the launch dates and give you guys the best analysis of those uh, of those factions and new add-ons as DLC comes down the pipe. So I greatly appreciate if you guys would help out to get there. I need your subscription, and I greatly appreciate you. We'll see you on a future video here at The Art of Saves Coming.